Hi. Okay, um, back to relationships. <laughs> Seems to be a big topic. My question is, um, I want to understand a little bit about how the universe orchestrates events. Um, it gives you what you expect. Next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was in a relationship, and, um, <laughs> and I, I, I do see that in relationships I have this thing of, of I don't expect them to continue long term like the other person that was up here before and um, and that that happened it was a relationship that was going really well Excuse well me. the more you talk about it the more you escalate that vibration okay so let's talk about something else well um, okay I want to um, just understand don't want to talk about something else I want to keep escalating what isn't working <laughs> need to talk about my issue right need to keep it alive and active so that I can keep attracting around it so that I can keep justifying my complaint <laughs> you don't mean to do it no but you are doing it mm -hmm. in other words when you continue to talk about what is and how you feel about it you continue to keep active in your vibration that so people who are really wanting long-term relationship don't have access to you because you're offering a vibration that is different from that so do you need to take the subject of relationship and think about it in a way that will allow a long-term relationship? Well, that would help, but you don't have to do that. You could just think about the other things in your life that are working, or you could think about anything other than what isn't working, and you could open your vibration and allow a long-term relationship. But then as a relationship comes and you say, oh, this is a really good one. This is better than anything that I ever thought I could get. I hope it lasts. Then sometimes you get back on that same track again. Mm -hmm. And so why worry about something being long term? Why not enjoy it now? We never see you say to the ice cream cone, I was hoping for a long term relationship with you. <laughs> please, please don't melt. <laughs> I'm just going to sit you here and I will just lick you a tiny little bit every day. I want you to be a long-term relationship. Instead, you say, I think I will enjoy this now. I think I will enjoy this now. And so, you see, we think that the reason that people get fixated on the idea of long-term anything, I want to win the lottery so I'll have long-term money, or I want to get a relationship that would be long-term, or I want to find the perfect house that I will really be happy in committing myself to for a long period of time. And we think the reason that so many of you do it is because you believe really in shortage. You, you don't think that there's that many really good ones going around, and you're afraid that when you get one, that if that one doesn't stay, that then there'll be the shortage, the drought of not being able to find the others. And what we're wanting you to understand is that there is an ongoing avalanche of well-being flowing to you. And you don't have to take a little piece of it, no matter whether it's a relationship or a piece of money or a house or a piece of property. You never have to take hold of a piece of it and say, I've got to protect myself. I've got to hold this because if I don't protect it, then the well-being is going to get away from me and I'm going to be left in a drought or with nothing. Because universal forces are hearing your desire and are keeping the reservoir of well-being flowing to you at all times. If you are not worried about it being so long term, more of them would be. But we want you to start saying to yourself, when you find yourself saying, I hope this lasts, or I want to attract one that lasts, we would like to hear you begin to say, fun now doesn't matter. Fun now doesn't matter. Fun now doesn't matter. Fun now doesn't matter. It's fun now. Life is good now. Doesn't matter. Fun now doesn't matter. Fun now doesn't matter. Esther plays this game where They'll get into an RV park or into a city like San Diego. Recently, they've been in Malibu for about 10 days before coming here. And every day, they walked. They enjoyed the ocean. They saw hundreds of dolphins jumping right outside their window and two big whales. As they took walks back up to the hillside where they couldn't see anything other than nature and Cher's house. <laughs> They felt exhilaration at the perfection of their time. And 
Esther is watching the days go by and knowing that the weather was holding just for them. It was magnificent weather. Day and night they walked. The windows were open. They didn't have to close the windows or turn on the air conditions. It was just a perfect time. And then Esther began saying, no one can make me go. No one can make me go. Which was her fun way of saying to Jerry, I am loving this so much. I'm having such a good time. And on the day before it was time to go, about a hundred times she said, no one can make me go. Sort of revving up a sort of artificial resistance. No one can make me go, she is saying. But what she really meant was, what's next? What's next? What's next? Because in the moment that it was time to pull up the feet and pull in the cords and get on the road onto the next place, her heart began to soar in a new and profound way, even higher, even sure, even happier than the last days that she'd been in that place. As she began to anticipate what was coming next and what was coming next and what was coming next. That's the way we would like you to feel relative to all things. You're supposed to have a very good time. It is supposed to be good for you. In other words, Esther knows that her favorite place of all places is Malibu. She knows that she's not going to see whales jumping in the orange grove out here. <laughs> and she knows that the atmosphere and the environment is different from that. But she also knows that her happiness level does not have to dip because there is a change of scenery. And that's the thing that we so want so much for you to hear. As you begin to try to feel this adventure of what's next and what's next, it is our promise to you it will soothe the sting of what you think you're leaving behind. And before you know it, you, when you leave this room, we know that even though we've had a good time together, you're not going to stand in this room and look longingly back, wishing that we could all just live here forevermore. You're eager to get on with what is next. And when you adopt that sort of attitude about relationship, before you know it, you'll find yourself in a relationship that feels good, that feels good, that feels good. Don't misunderstand. We're not saying to you that you should just keep moving from person to person to person to person to person. We're saying that the attitude that it's good now and the attitude that it will continue to be good or the attitude that it's going to get good or the attitude that good is coming is the attitude that keeps you in the place where you let in the good that is lined up. We wish that you could see from our vantage point what's lined up for you. You would not be crying. <laughs> But you've got to stop crying and being sad to let it in. So then it comes around to that old thing. You've got to get happy to let happy stuff in. You say, well, let the happy stuff in and then I'll be happy. And you say, you've got to get happy to let the happy stuff in. And you say, well, let the happy stuff in and then I'll be happy. And we say, you have to go with the flow of universal forces. Give it up. Give up the resistance. Stop the struggle. And start having a good time. And stop making such a big hairy deal out of everything. Not just you, but all of you. In other words, uh, stop making big things out of little things. Relationships are not the big thing that you make them out to be. It's an opportunity to experience more of who you are. It's an opportunity to explore close up who someone else is so that they can explore close up who you are. In other words, your relationship with your source is where your true joy comes from, you see. And sometimes you hook up with someone who has light in their eye and for a little while they serve as a catalyst to hook you up with source. But they've only been a jumper cable to hook you up with source. You have a direct route to hook up with source. And when you hook up with source, then you're joyful in your now and then the people that come to you, you have a very nice dance together, you see. Very good. Thank you. Yes, it is. Yes, it is.